Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. My name is Jackson Mummy, and each week we'll be bringing you updated information about the bar exam and what you need to do in order to make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Ready to get started? Let's jump to it. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, January 11th. I woke up this morning and it was snowing. I don't understand that because Siri told me there was no snow in the forecast. So I'm just completely confused by all that. Anyway, glad to have all of you here. Amanda, you're here with us today. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Matt. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackson. Yeah, we had a great discussion last week. I was just saying, I went back and reviewed it. It was like, wow, Amanda dropped some real wisdom bombs there. It was fabulous. So excited to do that. And June, you're here and glad to have you back. Welcome. And you're going to be talking about group coaching call in a minute. And then we're going to introduce a new member of the team, Dawson. Tracy is going to join us and we're, she's going to talk a little bit at the end today. And we've got some exciting stuff going. So we are continuing to expand our staff. Brianna is in trial prep this week. So she is not joining us, but she's still continuing to do a bunch of stuff for us. So just so that everybody knows that. So welcome to all of you. We're going to try and answer your questions today. We've got some great questions and Amanda and I will deal with those. I wanted to just update you on a couple of things. First of all, my coaching schedule for the next 45 days is going to be busy. I've got plenty of time, but still we're starting to get filled up. So this is the time. If you're in the UBE, I would highly recommend if you want coaching to look at working with Amanda or Brianna, they've got coaching opportunities and times available. You get a couple of bonus calls with them and they're brilliant and talented and wonderful. And as you will see and hear, we are going to open up some California coaching with Tracy and you'll hear more about that later as well. But this is the time, if you're thinking about upgrading your coaching, this is the time to get it done. And we really want to encourage you to do that. There's plenty of time still left, but this is probably the week to really jump in there and do that. And June put the link in to order the upgrades. It's also in your online course. So you'll see those links there. Amanda, let me bring you in. What's the world look like to a bar taker at about 45 days out? Because I know we've got a lot of questions that are going to focus on this today, but let's just start with an overview from your perspective. Yeah. So I think this is the point in time where people are looking to see improvement and progress. People start going back to, am I improving on my questions? What's my percentage getting right? And also we started to talk a lot last week about the distractions of looking for the easy way and the new shiny object that's going to get them across the finish line. Um, and so some of the, we can, I'm sure we'll unpack in these questions, right? Some of those patterns of thinking and how we can break them because it, there is still a long way to go, right? We're not going to take our first practice exams probably till February. So focus less on the scores and more on the learning, right? Less yeah. on the percentages, yeah. more on the learning. So I'm sure we'll talk about it, but I think it's a time where these sorts of things start to come up and they can be a bit dis distracting from the job at hand right now. Yeah, there could be a lot of distractions. And I think that it's important to keep your eye on the task at hand right now and not get too far ahead of yourself. I think you're going to see yes. that a lot in the questions you've got. So why don't we yep. go ahead and jump into the questions? They were great ones. And I think they represent, I picked the ones that represent what I'm hearing from a lot of people. And I know you're hearing it in the group calls as well. First question, the student said, I want to check in on, see how my progress is coming along. I've completed the photo reading program. And I'm on the, currently on lecture number two in evidence, and this was a California student. I would tell you that in general, the progress that you're making will depend in large part about when you start it. So if you just got underway, it would be natural that you'd be in one of these early subjects. The key is how many hours you're putting in right now and what you're getting done. In general, if you are just starting the program, I think you need to be at about 30 to 40 hours a week of study. If you started some time ago and you're 35, 40, 45% of the way through the course, I think 20 hours a week is sufficient. Now, one of the things that I do, June prepares a report for me of how people are doing in terms of percentage completion of the course. We can monitor that. And I'll take a look at that this week and I will be recording videos. And if you get a video from me, it's because I think you're not at a fast enough pace. It's not that you haven't gone far enough. It's just the pacing I think is too slow. But when it comes to this pacing idea, Amanda, is 40 hours about right if you're just starting out right now? Does that feel about right to you? 
I think so. Yeah. I think if you're just starting out, there's still plenty of time. You just have to put in a little bit more time than someone who started maybe in December. Yeah, I think so. And the other part of this is you got to follow the instructions. If an assignment says it takes three hours, don't take five, don't take six. I've had several of those students who said, I can't understand why I'm not going to finish in time. And then they tell me they've been spending eight hours on a three hour assignment. It just doesn't work that way. What's maybe you can speak to this, Amanda, the benefit of staying within the time frames, even when you want to go deeper, because I know that's something you wanted to do. You really wanted to dig in deeper. Yeah. And I think that, again, this can come from the attitude of or the habit of being a perfectionist or overachiever, right? And I think I talked about this last week that a lot of you, I validate that because that's what got you this far is overachieving, d- diving in, reading every line, right? And so I think you've designed the course and everyone at CBR has designed the course in this way that keeps us all in check from that attitude, right? Don't spend too long on it. Don't read every word because when you go and revisit the problems, when you go to do your mind maps, you're going to revisit this material anyway. Rest assured, the course has time for you to dig in deep just in a different way. So I think staying on pace in those time constraints can be hard, but it's worth it. Yeah. And it's just a, it's a discipline. You just have to say to yourself, I'm going to stop even if I don't feel like I know it all or I understand it all, or I'm satisfied with what I've learned. Yes. It's a buffet. You get to come back multiple times. So don't try and load up too much at the beginning. So I think to this student that was just starting out and was on evidence, that's great. Just put in, you're going to put in more hours. That's the the bottom line. In the same vein, we got a lot of questions that sort of said something like this. This student said, I want to follow a path that will get me to the finish line fully prepared. I want to make the best use of my time for the next remaining weeks and follow the roadmap you think would be best. What's that roadmap? What's the roadmap? The roadmap is the course structure. And I think what happens is I'm loathe to modify that unless there's a particular reason to do that is there's a structure to the way that we presented the material, both in terms of the reading and then lectures and then question practice. But even within the subjects, there is a build of the subjects throughout the course and there is a review built in and there is a degree of difficulty that that is added as we go along. You remember this, Amanda, that Those early essay questions are not terribly difficult in retrospect. They get harder as we go along. And if someone jumps subjects and goes to a later subject before they've done some of the earlier ones, they may find themselves in uh, more trouble. It's a little tougher and they haven't built the skill set in yet. Yeah, 100%. That that question is such an interesting question because, yeah, the roadmap is the course. And I love how the students said, I will follow it to the letter. Great. I know you're going to follow it to the letter now and you're going to do great because you're going to put in your 40 hours if you're just starting and use this seven weeks wisely. Yeah. And you could definitely do that. And that's the message we want to give you today is you have enough time. And if you do what we ask you to do, you're going to be fine. I think where I get nervous as a code is when people start cherry picking. And they say, I'm going to do this, but not this, or I want to do this, but not that. Now we do have lessons in the course that we designate as optional. They're mostly the deep dives on subjects. And so you certainly can skip those unless you're having a problem with the rule against perpetuities. And why wouldn't you? But for the most part, I think if you just follow what we've laid out, we know it works. It's now we're going on more than three decades of experience. There's a real wisdom, I think, behind the pedagogy of the course. and so. It's important to follow that roadmap and not jump all over the place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I know it's tempting. <laughs> I know it is. Just don't do it and don't jump the gun. I think that's the other part, isn't it? That people suddenly think I got to take a full length test. And, and you yeah. think, why? You haven't completed all the subjects yet. And they're like, yeah, but I'm sure I got to take a full length test. And you're like, don't do that. This is yes. not the time for that. Yeah, everyone's anxious to know that predictive score. At the end of the day, a lot of people take that predictive test. They do really well and they still fail or they do not so well and they pass. So again, stick to the job at hand. Keep going. The predictive test will come, right? The full length practice will come. Yeah, and we'll be talking about those in February. I promise we'll be talking. We're just not there yet. So there you go. All right. The next question came from a student who was struggling with performance tests and said, I can't really afford the coaching. She said, do you have any suggestions or strategies I can do on my own to strengthen my skills? I think when it comes to performance tests, and I'm anxious to get your take on this, Amanda, because you actually worked with them on the EBE. I think one of the best ways to do this is to take the more recent exams, which you'll find in our materials in the 
MPT book two and take tests that are either objective or persuasive in tone, but to a legal audience to focus primarily on those two groupings of performance tests. And then I would recommend writing at least one performance test every week between now and the bar exam and doing that under time conditions. And then going back and looking at the drafter point sheets for those performance tests. And that's why I'd like you to be using the more recent ones because they do have the point sheets. And the point sheets are the grading sheets that the national conference give to the local examiners to say, here's how you should grade a performance test. So it's a really good way to measure what you've done and to see all of the possibilities that are out there. And to my mind, that's really one of the best strategies I can offer somebody in terms of strengthening their skills is just the practice. What's your take there? Yeah, I think so. Just getting familiar with the type of questions, getting familiar with how you're going to organize yourself, right? How you're going to go few go through this vast amount of material that is given to you. I think the more times you can do it within reason, right? Obviously, I wouldn't take four performance tests a day, right? And only focus on that. But the more times you can do it, repeat it, especially if you've identified it as an area that you feel like you need more practice in, right? Yeah, I think practice just makes the biggest difference on a performance test. And the reason I'm saying to stay with the legal audience is that when we look at the performance tests from the bar the last few years, they've been almost all either persuasive or objective to legal audiences. Now, there obviously are non-legal audience performance tests and they come up periodically. And so you, if you haven't done them, make sure you do them. But in the course, we've designed at least one opportunity to write each of those. So I would just stay with the, the legal audience and really focus down. I think an objective task to a legal audience is almost a given on every bar exam. So if you're in Georgia, if you're in the UVE, that's the circumstance. If you're in California, they have almost exclusively stayed in the objective task to the legal audience for their performance test. And if you're in Florida, what's a performance test? You don't know. Take your time and work on Florida multiple choice. So there you go. So. Those are one of the things. The other thing I would just point out is that I know that people are certainly aware of expenses, but on the coaching for UBE with Amanda or Brianna, that is also available to be paid over a 12 period. So it is pretty affordable. And I think there's a real value to getting that coaching. And so if there's any way to do it, I would really encourage you to do it. It does make a difference. We see the value of having the coaching. And I think that's one of the ways that you can go. So a couple of things there. All right, next question. Again, the theme just goes all the way through this in every question, doesn't it, Amanda? This student said, I'm getting a little anxious watching the lectures. I don't know why. I'm such a calm lecturer. And I feel like I need to practice more with MBEs and the essays. I want to just stop there for a moment before we go any further. What's the value, Amanda, as you see it, of going through the lectures? Why should somebody go through the lectures? Oh my gosh, I had such a visceral reaction when the, I when you read that and I was reading it on the screen. Oh, there's so, so I also know, I will totally also validate that there's different learning types, right? Some people are not auditory learners. Some people are more visual and some of us are a combination of all. And also sometimes I said this last time, we don't, we actually don't know what kind of learning type we are. And I love that this course has so many different ones. And I love that the lectures also have the words on the screen for visual learners. Yeah. I think the value in going through the lectures is, and I'm not saying that to flatter you, Jackson, but the examples that you give in the lectures and the, the way it is done, I, oh my gosh, they helped me in so many questions on so many essays that I took and really learning the law. So I think one, hearing, seeing, working with the material in a variety of ways is so important regardless of what kind of learner you are, because on the exam, you're going to be tested in a variety of ways, right? So I think that is so important. And I do really believe the lectures in this course are unique, right? The examples you give, the ones you use with the characters, the kind of outlandish examples, they stick in your mind. And I think that helps even if you're going later on to do practice or mind mapping or anything like that. So that's my two cents for what it's worth. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we tried deliberately to create these lectures in a way that would be meaningful to people. So I would encourage you to not skip the lectures. That's part of the roadmap that I think is important. And I understand, again, this sense of, I should just do more questions. That is, that's the mantra that you hear over and over again. But doing questions without the basis of understanding really is like practicing the piano and playing the wrong notes every day. It just doesn't get you very far. And so I, I would try to resist that temptation. I also know that if you're on Reddit or if you're on Twitter or if you're 
following a group of text chain, you're hearing people say, oh, I'm doing X number of questions a night as though it's some sort of a litmus test and it's not, and there's no reason to do it. It's a waste of your time and energy. So again, following the structure of doing a few questions and then coming back to the subject later is still in our experience, a better process for you than just doing more and, questions. Yeah. yeah, Jackson, can I say one other thing about that? Yes. Um, something I see with students who are doing a lot of questions and not, like you said, working with the material and learning and in, internalizing it, I don't want to say memorizing, right? I actually see them picking when I review MBEs, the answer that is a misstatement of the law. And I find that really interesting. Like they haven't taken- happens? Why do you think that happens? Yeah, I, because they didn't learn it, because I don't know, because it probably, but I, and I'm always like the answer, I see this over and over again with my different tutoring and the way I work with students in the bar exam. And I'm like, that's not even, that's a, just a misstatement, right? Like how you can categorize the wrong answers that the yeah, bar gi yeah, gives you. Yeah, yeah. And, and I see that when they've jumped ahead and it's just too many practice problems. And I don't know if they're almost falling for the trap more of these yeah, answers that look good, but aren't the answer. Yeah, it's foundational. You got to put in the foundation of the material, then you can start to figure it out. And when you yes. go the wrong direction in terms of the study, then you end up in these traps and, yes. and then you get frustrated. And then there's this parade of horribles and it just gets worse. So it's really important to follow process. I think that's part of what we want to say. The next line of this question, this is a fascinating question. So I just broke it down sentence by sentence, really. Was the student selling photo reading, but I'm not sure how to gauge its effectiveness for photo reading. I'll just say this. You will not understand photo reading. You will not know if it's working while you're doing it in, in the moment. It starts to come. And for most people, the next few weeks, you'll feel better than you did previously. As you get closer to the exam, you'll begin to realize it's working. I think most people have that experience where it suddenly just starts to make sense. I think that's what happened to you, wasn't it, Amanda? Yes. And I, yeah, I, and I wasn't true photo reader, so mm -hmm. I can't really comment on the photo reading, but the process that happened, exactly what happened to me, right? Yeah, yeah. It just starts to build and grow. And when you're in the midst of it, it's very hard to know, do I know this or not know it? That's not what we're trying to figure out today. No. So don't worry about whether it's working. I can tell you if you're a photo reader, it is working. If you're following the process, it's working. You don't need to try and be measuring it as you're going through each of these. So don't worry about, is it working? Not I want to give a real quick analogy to this, Jackson. And it's funny, this is something my spouse says. If you were planting a garden or planting potatoes, would you dig them up every two weeks to see how they were doing? <laughs> And love remembering that. Don't try to prove to yourself that the potatoes are growing. You've planted the seeds. They're growing, guys, people. They're growing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm not going to dig up my potatoes. Oh. And then the last comment from this particular student said, I'm mind mapping my notes, but it's taking me a while to get through each subject. What I'm going to say here is, yes, good. I'm glad you're mind mapping. But make sure you stay within the time limits that we put on each assignment for mind mapping. Again. This can expand and just get completely out of control. And so you don't want to do that. So make sure that you're doing minimal amounts and then adding to your mind maps as you go along. They are dynamic, not static. So it's really important to understand you don't have to get it all first time through. Okay, good. Anything else to add to that, Amanda? No, I think that's great. Okay. All right. So there you go. So I'm glad the student's working hard. Just relax. Trust yourself. Trust the process. All right, next question. Again, you're going to see the theme here. I'm not sure if I can be ready in time for the February bar. I've been going through the course slower than expected. It's not my first time studying for the bar, so the material is not new to me, but I'm not feeling confident with my ability to answer correctly. Student says, I'm struggling with whether I have time to really buckle down and get prepared for the February bar. Should I take the July bar? I can't tell you how many of these messages I get at this point. And my answer generally to people is it's too early to postpone, too early to wave off. I think I know it feels tight. I know it feels like the exam is right on top of you. It is not. I would wait until we're at least in the 30 day window to make that determination. I think that the part of what happens is no one feels confident today about their ability to answer questions correctly. They just don't do that. It's just not part of the process. No, not at all. And I was the same way. Right down to the practice tests, no, not confident in it because you're still learning even when you take the practice test. But this is what we're doing. We're building the confidence, right? Yeah. And so don't expect to be confident and to say, oh, yeah, I know it all. I could take the test tomorrow. 
that'd be great if you could, but I can tell you that 90% of our students are not ready to take the exam. And if I go over to the big box bar review, 99% of them aren't ready to take the exam. They're still in the early stages of their study. And it's way too early to pull the ripcord. I think I, I went to see Maverick with Tracy, Top Gun. And I think there's a thing in there where they're trying to pull the ripcord and get out of the, do the eject seat. But it's a little too early, right? Don't pull the, don't pull the eject cord quite yet. Yeah, don't You're give up there. on yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's just too early for that. And I remember giving you that pep talk at about this point. You were like, they don't know, man. Can I be right? And I started a little bit later and I got sick too. That yeah, was a yeah. big, and I think, COVID, but, yeah, yeah, I think I saw some people who got COVID or had yes. the flu and people in my coaching calls that have had things come up and yeah. it happens, but don't, yeah, don't quit on yourself yet. Yeah. And so the student then said, if I take the July exam, will I have access to my current material? The answer is yes. You'll have access until you pass the bar. That's the way our lifetime pass guarantee and our deferral package works. There's no fee for any of that. So not to worry about that at all. And then they said, what would my new study schedule look like if I did defer? You'd keep studying, but you just cut back the number of hours. The worst mistake people can make if you decide to postpone, which is fine, but they postpone today and then they stop studying. And then they get back and they decide to not start studying for the July exam until guess what? 45 days before the exam. I don't know why that happens. Don't do that. If you postpone, you got to keep studying. You got to take advantage of this time. You can't walk away. Yeah. That's the... Get ahead because you don't know what will happen then. Anything, yeah. life, life, we can't control life happening. So it's, I hate to say, don't take a break, but like you said, cut back. You can give yourself yeah. a break so you're on pace, but keep going. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. But I think it's too early to pull the cord. Keep going. Keep moving. All right. Next question. Can you send a list of recommendations of essays you believe I should tackle, or should I just send any essays to you? The answer is, if you're going through the course, we have assigned essays, and you should write those essays. I pick them for reason. Every essay that's in the course that is assigned, I have selected because it's a good teaching question. It doesn't matter what course you're in, E, Florida, Georgia, California. You can go off book and pick other questions. The problem is, most of the time, people pick really bad questions. They pick ones that are old and too easy, or they pick ones that are out of their skill set for right now, and then they get frustrated. So you can avoid that problem by just doing the assigned questions. If you've already written the assigned questions, then I would go to later questions, more modern ones or newer ones, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. That's what I did. I just followed the course word for word. And then when it was time to pick and choose, I went into the books to get yeah. some of those other yeah. questions. Yeah. And I think that's the way to do it. I think you want to see the way the examiners are drawing questions right now and being able to work with that. So that's my recommendation. If you're in the coaching program with me, I've got a little more flexibility. If you're working with Amanda or Brianna, we're going to ask you to stay with the assigned questions because those are the ones that they're, they know best and can coach you up a lot. It's the recommendation. All right. One last question, and then we'll get to a couple of other things we've got. Students said, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I didn't pass last year. It ruined me. Can I handle another defeat? What an honest question. It breaks your heart, but it, I love the honesty there, right? Yeah. It takes a lot also to admit how much that it hurt you and where yeah. you're at. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think sometimes when you just call this out, when you acknowledge it, that's the first step to being able to deal with it. The student said, I'm a repeat taker, and I feel like the deck is already stacked against me, and then I'm worried about wasting valuable time by not practicing the essays and the MPTs. And again, this is the same thing we've been talking about. It's important to do all of those things, but make sure you've gone back. And I know this student's a photo reader. Go back and photo read the material, work on your mind maps, watch the lectures, then write the essays. Just writing essays, I think by itself right now is a mistake, don't you? Yeah. A hundred percent agree. And I know that again, if you go out into the world, you're going to hear that advice, 15 essays, a subject, 16, essays, whatever they try to tell you is the marker, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. really got to build the foundation. Yeah, I think so. And this student said, do you have any suggestions for the writing aspect? I'm reviewing the lectures, the information's in my head. I think that getting the coaching, this student's got some coaching calls still with me. But getting the coaching, looking at how you're doing in specific context is still the best way to do that. If you're not in the coaching program, look at the model or sample answers, look at the draft or point sheets if you're in the UBE and measure yourself against those things. The student said, I think I'm not being aggressive enough. I'm not sure what that meant, but I think it's a matter of not being afraid of the essays. The mindset here has to be, 
attacking them, answering and developing what you know based on your deeper knowledge of the law and trying to not be totally caught up in just reciting rules. And to me, that's where the real value comes. And I also think it's a point of just believing in yourself. Even if you fail, believe in yourself. You can do this. There's not a reason to think you can't do it. But I think we psych ourselves out sometimes, don't you? Yeah, I do. And I think even the first couple, I think the advice you gave about the writing is spot on, being methodical about it and developing a rhythm. But even the beginning saying the the first part that you said is hard to read, that it ruined me. Can I handle another defeat? I also would remind everyone that it, the bar, failing or passing the bar is not a reflection of you it, and it doesn't define you as a person. And I know that it feels like everything, right? And I've been there, right? Where it feels like everything. But I will say June's mindset coaching really helped me separate from that and made a big difference, right? That yeah. I can yeah. handle the worst that will happen. And this test is not designed for everyone because it is ableist, it's racist, it's classist. There are issues with it, right? And it just doesn't define you, but it is something that we have to, we can acknowledge those things here together, but it is something we have to conquer. We have to get it. We have to pass it to earn our license, but it doesn't define you. And separating myself from the result and my worth as a person, right, from that result was super helpful. And June was so instrumental in doing that. So get her mindset coaching, get on her calls or, or get in one of our calls because we've all been there where we had that feeling like this was going to be everything or nothing. And even when I took the test so many years ago, the first time I didn't have any money, I couldn't afford a course. I didn't take a review course because I couldn't afford one. And it felt like everything to me. I needed this to get a job. I didn't have two dimes to rub together. I was still living in a, a dorm room, like illegally at an institution. Oh, wait, this is being recorded, right? Yeah, we won't go. say where. It's it's hard. I will say it's hard, but believe in your, believe in yourself. It doesn't define you. Yeah. June, I wanted to get you up on the screen because I know that this kind of question really leans into what you do. It does. And first, I want to applaud this student for sending in this email and being vulnerable because that's really hard. Because what we typically do is instead of voice or lean into the fear we're feeling, we make excuses. And that is when we tend to defer. And then we defer again because the fear creeps in. So it's easier to make an excuse when we feel uncomfortable. If you take calming the chaos with me, I'm going to work with you to lean into that uncomfortable, to get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's vulnerability and that's where the magic happens. That's where your confidence, your strength, your resiliency actually starts to rise. So bravo for recognizing what's going on and sending in that email. And second yeah. of all, you're not defeated ever. As Amanda said, this does not define you. It is not who you are. Past failures, it's a learning. It's a chance to learn. It's a challenge. It's something for you to rise to. It's your next marker. Okay. I always say on my calls, every time, and I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing it, unless you are in mortal danger, fear is your compass. Fear shows you're being challenged. Fear shows you're on the right path. And it's okay to be scared. If you were to come in here and say, I'm never scared of anything. We got other issues. Fear is good. Fear means you are being challenged. And challenged is what we want you to be right now. Because that is going to make you the best you can be to be successful on this exam. And as Amanda said, when her and I had cost, there was some pushback. <laughs> she was not all in. But by the time it was ready for her to sit for that exam, she was all in. She was nothing is going to stop me. And it was amazing to watch that progression over about seven weeks. Yeah. So if you are thinking about this, now is the time. Okay. I said it before. I believe 30% is your knowledge. The rest of it is your head. It is your mindset in passing. Because you will hit a hiccup on the test. When you sit for the bar, something will trip you up and you have to decide right then in 10 seconds, 
Are you going to stay tripped up or are you going to recalibrate and keep going? I can't yeah. do that. In the recalibration. That is the turning point of past our pain. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think it's this avoiding overwhelm and recalibrating and resetting yes. yourself and ready to go. And I think that's actually a fairly good transition point. I want to bring Tracy Dawson in to talk and introduce her to, to all of you. Thanks, June, for that. And if you haven't gotten June's coaching with Calming the Chaos, she'll put the link up in the chat box. It is a terrific program and extremely and practical and well-priced. And we would encourage people to take it. Great to have that. So Tracy, I want to bring you in. Welcome to the uh, the webinar. Welcome to the staff. Welcome to the team. So full disclosure, Tracy is my sister. She's been practicing law longer than me. I started working for you, right? Way back when? Way back when. Way back. You've been practicing law for how many years now? I'm in my 40th year. I just, just went inactive in my 40th year. That's crazy. And you not only practiced law, you were the youngest judge in the state of Colorado, and you sat on the bench for, what, 30, 30 plus? 33 years. 33 years. It's amazing. And you're still my little sister. And then after 33 years on the bench or somewhere, somewhere along the way, you decided to go to seminary and you got ordained as a pastor, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. And now you're retired from active clergy work, but you teach. And you've been teaching some work and you and I've been talking. And of course, you obviously know law and the bar review because you've had to put up with me for 30 plus years talking about it. And you talk to ministers, pastors about burnout and boundaries and setting goals and something that you described as anxious systems. And we're going to talk about anxious systems a little bit today, but let me just tell our audience what we're doing here. As CBR is growing, we're, we become, I think, the preeminent, we are the preeminent course for non-traditional students, repeat bar takers. And there's only so much of me and Amanda and Brianna and June that could go around. And I went to Tracy and said, you're retired. You don't have anything to do, which is not true. Would you like to help out? And she willingly agreed to do some group coaching and some coaching for us, particularly in California with the bar exam there. And I, I really think this is a wonderful opportunity to have somebody who's been in practice for decades, who sat as a judge, has been an attorney, but also has the compassion that comes from her ministry work. And so I think this is a unique combination of skills. And in spite of the fact that she is my annoying little sister, she's so brilliant, as you'll see, and very talented. So I thought it would be good, Tracy, to start today and talk about this idea of anxious systems. Maybe you could define that for our audience and tell them how that fits into what we've been talking about today. Yeah, thank you, Jackson. Thanks for inviting me to be a part of what I think is a wonderful program that is targeting a wonderful group of people who have this idea that they have failed at something, failed at the bar exam. And if nothing else, I'd love you to get rid of that word fail because none of you failed at the bar exam. You did not pass the bar exam, but you did not fail at anything. You got some points, right? You got some points. You sat down, you got some answers right. You got some things that you were able to say. And that idea of failing increases anxiety. So when we're talking about anxious systems, Jackson, you have created this system here that is frankly mind boggling. When I started looking at everything you've put together, it's like, oh my gosh, this system has systems upon systems. You have a system for how to read voter reading. You have a system for how to do mind maps and get the material inside your head. You have a system of lectures and essay writing, and this coaching is another system. And all of these systems are designed to make you successful in your bar exam journey. But you have another system that we often forget about, and that is your body system. That is your self. Your self is a system, and your system cons consists of your head, your heart, and your gut, and you've got to pay attention to that system. You have to feed that system properly. You have to love that system that is you. Anxious systems 
which you all are. You're all an anxious system. You're preparing for the bar. There's lots of people sending in questions saying, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to be ready? Let me tell you, nobody who sits for the bar when they sit down is ready to take that exam. Nobody sits down and says, this is nothing. I got this. This is easy. I remember when Jackson took the bar. And in one of our conversations, he's like, how do you get your head around all of this? I can't possibly do everything I'm trying to do, working and studying and taking care of my family and blah, blah, blah. I'm not ready. Nobody thinks they're ready when they sit down. That's anxiety. That's an anxious system. So I think when I'm talking about an anxious system, Jackson, I'm talking about that head and that heart and that gut being disconnected and a person not practicing good self-care, which is so critical right now in these last 40 some odd days before you take the bar. This is not the time to let your system get so anxious that it folds in on itself and paralyzes you. Yeah. I, and I, we see a lot of that. I know Amanda is, is nodding her head as well. And June is saying the same. We see a lot of this where people become self-destructive. They start repeating those negative stories. They think of themselves as failures and it cascades and then it gets worse and worse. And so it's important to have perspective and to take care of yourself, right? And to be out there and doing that. Tracy, you've been in positions where you've seen people of extreme stress. How do you deal with that? How do you, what does self-care look like for you? Thanks for asking that question. There's some simple things that you can do for self-care. One is drink a lot of water. Don't get yourself dehydrated. Um, don't be drinking a lot of alcohol. Don't be putting a lot of crap into your system. Try to do a cleanse at this point so that you have your brain working at its maximum capacity and your body is not paralyzed or not folding in on yourself. Self-care for me means taking that head and thinking, all right, how am I going to do the work that we need to do? How am I also going to rest my brain so that it functions at its highest level? And I call that Zen. When I took the bar 41 years ago now, I still remember, and I'm going to show you something in a couple of minutes if Jackson allows me to, but I took my study times and I blocked them out and I did not. I remember last week, Amanda said, don't say you're going to finish the evidence work this day. Say you're going to work three hours this day. Don't set yourself up for, for a deadline that you can't meet. Take your work times, set them out into reasonable blocks of time. It's just like on Zoom. If you sat on Zoom for eight hours at one time, your brain would explode. So when I teach classes, for example, I break them into three-hour segments. Three hours. Three hours is about all you can do at any one time. And then I went and played racquetball between session one and session two every single day. I did something with my body. You can walk. Swimming is great. Because if you go swim some laps, those mind maps are going to flow through you and become part of your energy instead of something that you're fighting against. The second time, I watched one of my favorite TV shows in between. I just totally took a break. And then I studied at night. You may think that you can't watch the Super Bowl on February 5th because, oh my gosh, you have to study, study. You know what? If you follow this system, you can watch the Super Bowl. On February 5th, you can take that time off. Jackson, is it possible for me to share my screen? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Renee Brown is a wonderful writer. Someday, when you're not reading all your law books and all that, she's just a wonderful person to read. And really what I'm trying to get you to do to think about your anxious system is to trust, to trust. You're going to trust yourself, but you should trust this system because it's proven to work. And as Jackson was saying, follow it to the T. Trust. Brene Brown says you build trust one marble at a time. You build this one marble at a time. And you can see on the left, these people are playing marbles. All right. Brene Brown has this great acronym. And we can send this out to you if you want. It's called braving. And I think braving has 
such application here for ministering, if you will, to your anxious system. You set your boundaries. That means that you set the times that you're going to work on your bar exam prep. And you don't let other things get in the way of those times. You turn off your cell phone. You turn it over. You put it away. You put it on do not disturb. You don't have the TV on while you're working. You don't accept anyone saying, hey, come on, let's just go. Let's go get a drink. We've been doing a lot of work. You set your times. You work your times. You set your boundaries. But you also set the boundaries for when you're not going to be working. Because if you overload your brain, then your brain isn't going to work on the day that you need it to. Second, R is reliability. You know, do what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to put in nine hours of work today in three three-hour blocks, then do it. And at the end of that, put a marble in the jar. And you might need to do it literally. When I work with groups, I use ping pong balls. and I one ping pong ball in a big basket. You can go get them for a dollar at the dollar store. But when you have finished what you say you're going to do, then give yourself a marble. Accountability. Own your mistakes. Own the things that are getting in the way. And apologize for those things and apologize to yourself. Gee, I just, I went eight hours and not nine. Don't beat yourself up about it. But say, I'm accountable. I'm going to Go back. I'm going to set my boundaries. I'm going to be reliable with them tomorrow. The vault is the information that you are storing in your brain and that you are processing and you are putting into the mind maps so that you can recall it when you sit down to take that exam. If you put it in those mind maps and you look at the mind maps in your head when you're doing your work and when you're resting, then when you get to the exam, it's going to be right there integrity. Don't stop taking, don't stop studying for the February bar and say, oh no, I can't do this. I better go to July. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Practice this part of your law career the same way you're going to practice it as a practicing attorney. You're going to have integrity. You're going to get your work done. You're going to write with clarity. You're going to make your points well stated, and you're going to make this work. And you're going to do it for February. You're going to do it for February. Non-judgment. Don't judge yourself. Would you talk to a friend the way you talk to yourself? I'll bet you wouldn't. I'll bet you wouldn't. Stop that negative self-talk. Let's not word, use the word fail. Let's not use the word stupid. Let's not use the word incapable. Let's replace and reframe all of those with words that will Feed your mind and feed your heart to replace fear with courage and then to have your gut feel that, yes, I can do this. And then be generous with yourself or what I might call grace. Just love yourself during this time because this is tough, but you can do this. And that's how you minister to an anxious system. That's awesome. I we talk about braving all the time and we know what a difference it makes to use those concepts. And I think if you can bring those concepts in, that's a terrific opportunity as well. So thanks for doing that, Tracy. I appreciate that. That's great. Amanda, I know you've been listening in on this. Does this resonate for you? So much. I love Brene Brown. I know that a lot of people said that as well, but Tracy, that was wonderful. And just, I just think so important for our bar students, our bar hopefuls to hear. So I even appreciated it just for my own life, just to take a second and sit back and listen and remember the importance of all these things. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Tracy's got a lot of wisdom to share. I'm really excited to have her as part of the team. Celebration Bar Review has always been a family run business. And so we're just moving the family a little bit, just changing the family orientation a little bit here. And believe it or not, there are more members of my family with law degrees that you haven't met yet, but there you go. In any event, Tracy, we're glad to have you here. You're going to do your group coaching call starting tomorrow, Thursday, 3 p.m. Mountain Time. So that will be 5 p.m. Eastern. And the link will be up in the community network for our students. So people will jump in and now you've got a little bit of taste of what that's like. Before we wrap up. Finish? Yeah. Yeah. I saw there's a uh, question. Yeah. Sandra up. had a question. Yeah. She, she says, wanted... I love doing mind maps. Yeah. I tape myself. So she records herself. At the end of my study chunks, is that good? 
Yeah, I think that's a great way to do it. Amanda, I know you use mind maps. Maybe you want to comment on that as well. Yeah, that's amazing. So I guess I'm saying that you're taping yourself doing the mind maps, yeah. I think is what you're saying. Yeah. That's great watching yourself do it. And I think the more dynamic you can be about the process, the more it's going to stick with you and how it becomes, I think Tracy is saying, like part of you, right? You're walking with it, right? Instead of resisting it. So I don't know, seeing yourself doing it is a really cool idea. And I would love to hear feedback from people who might try it if you're doing your mind maps on the computer. Yeah, that'd be fun. I have just done a presentation on how to create a mind map. I will be posting that up in the community group for everybody. There wasn't enough time to get to it today, but just so you know it. I think that's great, Sandra. Love to see you doing that. All right. Thank you all for being, this is so wonderful. I mean, Tracy, Amanda, June, Brianna wasn't even here today. Pretty soon we're going to be in this position where I don't even have to say anything. I'm pretty excited about that. In any event, we are glad to have all of you with us today on the chat box and live. If you're watching on the replay, glad that you could catch us as well. We will be back again next Wednesday to take more questions, talk more about what's going on as we get closer to the exam encourage all of you to take advantage of the resources that we offer, the calming the chaos with June, the time management workshop with Brianna, the coaching with Amanda and Brianna, the group coaching calls with all of our great group coaches. These are all resources that are designed to help you be brave and to take advantage of those resources. Thanks to all of you on the team and the panel today. And thanks to all of you for being here. And uh, we will sign off and see you again next Wednesday. Have a great study week and look forward to talking with many of you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.